Beam from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. Here you'll meet right before your very ears the outstanding persons about whom all the world is excited. Persons you would die to have in your very own home. Persons who have made their marks in the world. Persons whom you envy so much you could scream. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. <laughs> this is Andy Griffith. A short while back, when I was standing right here in this exact spot, I introduced one of my favorite talents to you, and then I sat right down over there. The seat was empty at the time, and I listened right along with the rest of you and had myself a thoroughly good time. So did you, it appears. <laughs> Everybody, here's Morgan. <laughs> Thank you. And welcome to our new invention, a television program without the annoying picture tube. <laughs> this show is done in black and white sound. And you don't have to watch that rotten little kid say, Ring around the collar. <laughs> <laughs> And if you've been following the series, you know that we run a clean shop. Hardly any racism. We just offend majorities. No violence, very little S-E-X. Oh, I suppose there's some S-E-X, but your kid can listen. If you can get him to hold still. Anyway, your kid knows more about S-E-X than I do. He probably learned it from watching the news. Remember that case a while back where a wife said her husband... R-A-P-E-D, her. <laughs> and after the trial, they said they'd go back and try it again. <laughs> and then they got, or are getting a divorce. Well, the kids learn. <laughs> then he probably watches, or watched, Welcome Back Illiterate, <laughs> where he <laughs> learned how to talk dirty to a school teacher. <laughs> you may have noticed that when I say your child, I say he. Well, we're not S-E-X. I-S-T, either. It's just that there's a missing pronoun in English. We need a single word that means both he and she. Which causes me to say, welcome back, Henry Morgan. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, here's Morgan again. Henry Morgan, that is. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Do you suffer from headaches? Does the inside of your head sound like this? Or does it sound like this? Well, a new scientific breakthrough can remove your headache in a matter of seconds. Yes, in seconds, your annoying, aching headache will be gone. Scientists in long white coats holding test tubes while standing in very complicated laboratories full of glass things and electric stuff, have come up with ache out. Ache out takes the ache out of your head in seconds. Don't listen to the makers of Restolox. I've seen their advertising, and I'm here to tell you that Restolox is bunk. The good stuff is ache out. And for laughs. You ought to compare ache out with that punk merchandise, Ristaban. Ristaban stinks. They don't do nothing. It's rotten. Ooh, Ristaban. Listen, just listen to this man. A man who cried Ristaban. What do you say about Ristaban, sir? And here's a man who tried ache out. What did you think, sir? Oh, boy, it was... And there you have it, friends. Other brands are... Yeah. While Ake Out is... 
And next, friends, straight from the new Guinea Book of Records, may we introduce the man who ate 23 lemon meringue pies in 42 minutes from Gross Point, Michigan, Mr. Fats Olson. <laughs> Welcome to the program, Fats. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, oh I, I, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to give you a lesson in manners. I just yeah. meant that I hadn't heard what you said. No, I, I didn't say nothing. I know. That's what I meant. At any rate, you seem to hold the world's record for eating lemon meringue pies. By the way, are you sure you hold the record? Uh. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Well, it just occurred to me that somewhere in the world, someone may have eaten more than you, but didn't do anything about it. But, but, what do you mean? Uh. I simply mean that someone somewhere may have beaten your record, but never got in touch with the New Guinea people. In other words, it's like the Miss America contest. Did, did it ever occur to you there might be a much better Miss America somewhere, but she just didn't enter the contest? It's possible, you know. I like it the way it is. You like it the way it is? Yeah, the whole thing. I like, uh, I like the bathing suit part best. Uh, the rest of it all... Uh. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want Miss America to be just somebody who looks good in a bathing suit, would you? Uh, the rest of it is just... Uh. <laughs> Don't... Don't you want the girl to have talent? Oh. Oh. I got all the talent you need. It's right here in the book. There's plenty of talent. Well, yes, you certainly have a talent for eating lemon meringue pies. Yeah. I was wondering, could you have eaten more if they'd been, say, uh, custard pies, cherry pies, blueberry pies? Oh, that, that's stupid, you know. Oh, is it? You're stupid, stupid. Every one of them pies, it's a different contest. Like... Custard pies is a fellow in Australia named a Goonie, Elvis Goonie. <laughs> now, now, I got the lemon meringue. Next, I take on Goonie for the custard. How will you go about it? Oh, boy. Are you something else? Something else? All right, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> what you do is... Oh, you start off slow. Like, the, the first day, maybe I'll eat three, four custard pies before breakfast. Later, maybe five or six. You mean for lunch? No. After breakfast. Good Lord. What will you eat for breakfast? You think I'm going to say custard pies, right? Well, no. Well, that's what I eat. <laughs> maybe five or six for breakfast. I don't think we should go on with this. For an afternoon snack, uh, maybe I'll eat five or six more. Then... Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I'll eat uh, half a dozen before dinner. Uh, you know I, what? I, I don't want to know. You know what I eat for dinner? You know what I eat for dinner? I don't want to know. <laughs> Lamb chops. <laughs> Thank you. And five custard pies. For being our guest, Mr. Fats Olsen. Our next guest was to have been the man who became governor of Massachusetts by promising to reduce taxes by $500 million. Unfortunately, the voters are now demanding twice that much to have their heads examined. <laughs> Therefore, good night for the New Guinea Book of Records. <laughs> United States is made up of our most talented and capable citizens, men who are elected to their high office because they're the most intelligent, the most gifted leaders in America. <laughs> A great part of the work of the Senate is done in committees. Now, many people have wondered about what goes on in those committees. We take you now to the Senate office building in our nation's capital. To be specific, we're now in room 403 where a committee meeting is taking place among four of our distinguished senators, Bolivar, Makepeace, Moon, and Yakamaka. <laughs> the chairman is calling the meeting to order. Uh, this here meeting will come to order. Uh, this
This is the SELAC Special Subcommittee of the Permanent Standing Committee for the Investigation of Illegitimate, Communistic, and Illegal Conspiracies. <laughs> I hate conspiracies, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Let's get going. You all got the papers in front of you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh good, good, yeah. good, 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 good. <laughs> I've been uh, on a pack of committees, and we'll start the way you always do. Shuffle them papers. <laughs> good, good. We've done that real good. <laughs> now, uh, is there any questions? How about reading the minutes of the last meeting? Yeah, here, here. What do you mean, here, here? Well, I've been on committees before. I know what to do. When somebody says something, you think he's right, you say, here, here. <laughs> These ways I always does. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, my distinguished colleague from the great state of Bastard Massa has got the right of it. Uh, and may I add, Senator, that in my humble opinion, you do a great job, great job. Oh, great thank job. you, Senator. Uh, may I say that in my humble opinion, you are an A-OK -OK Chairman Crackerjack. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks to you, Senator. Thank you. Uh, now, where were we? Mm. Well, uh, I already said here, here, so it ain't my turn. <laughs> I realize that, Senator, and I thank you. And I thank you. How about the minutes? <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Any objections? Carry it, 100%. Now, who's got the minutes? The secretary's supposed to read the minutes. Well, uh, this being the first meeting of the subcommittee, Senator, we don't seem to have a secretary. Uh, it's in the appropriation, though, I know that. How much is in the appropriation? Anybody got the figures on that? I believe the figure's 35. <laughs> yeah. The appropriation for the great work of this special committee is 35. Is that millions or billions? Well, I'm sorry, I don't know the details. <laughs> I can, of course, put my staff to work on it, and I'm sure we can have the facts for you by the end of the week. But I do know that the front number is 35. Well, that ought to be enough so we can hire a secretary. I mean, here we are having a real meeting right here now, and there's minutes going on. We should have somebody taking them down. Like in a court where somebody sits at one of those little machines, it's like a typewriter, but isn't, you know what I mean? Say, uh, gentlemen, that gives me a wonderful idea. Uh, you know who's our great secretary? My very own wife, that's who. And she is great on minutes. Uh, what say I get her? Any objections? No. <coughs> Carry it. Uh, <laughs> I'll just phone and see do she want the job. Oh, uh, hello, honey. <laughs> it's me. No, 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 no. It, it, it's me, Fruitcake. <laughs> well, that's her name for me, Fruitcake. <laughs> uh, quite a story behind it. Oh, yeah, sweetheart, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what I was calling about, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. All over the floor, huh? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yeah, what I was calling about, as long as you're on the phone anyway, is uh, I'm running this here important committee, see, uh, and we need a secretary for the minutes and all. Uh, uh, just a minute. Uh, what's it pay, she says? I have no idea. I don't know, really. What uh, it uh, pays around uh, 40000 sweetheart. Uh-huh. 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 Uh, well, 50000 uh-huh. 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 Sixty, then. You will? Well, that's wonderful, sweetheart. Room 403. Okay. Goodbye, sweetheart. <coughs> She'll do her. Uh, she can give us every other Thursday from three till half past. <laughs> well, take that all it takes for minutes, doesn't it? Well, 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 I think so. Uh, well, well, praise be that settled. Sure helps when you know the committee business the way I do. Hey, hey Mr. Chairman. The chair recognizes the distinguished senator from the great state of Bassett Press. Yeah, yeah, well, now that things are really moving right along, I think that further investigation is necessary. And in order to do my part, I propose that I do a month's research in Paris, France. I feel, Mr. Chairman, that what my distinguished colleague has just said is more than reasonable. Except that I personally would prefer to start in Hong Kong, someplace like that. Good thinking. That's good thinking. I just think my wife's wrong. You got it. 
And I'll just wait for y'all in the good old U.S. Virgin Islands. There it is. Uh, and I'll get the wax started on the minutes and all. Well, gentlemen, if there's no further business, no, then I'll entertain a motion that this meeting be adjourned. Well, I make a motion that this meeting of the special subcommittee of the permanent standing committee for the investigation of illegitimate, communistic, and illegal conspiracies gathered here to investigate the conspiracy behind the murder of that great president, Abraham Lincoln, be adjourned. <laughs> Harris. Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Henry Morgan again with a question. Friends, are your teeth dull and dingy? Would you like your teeth to shine like the Egyptian sun? Use genuine King Tut Tut paste. <laughs> If you use King Tut Tut paste on your genuine King Tut Tut brush, your tut, your teeth, will glitter for 3,000 years. This tut paste is made to a secret formula known only to the ancients. Everybody knows that when a mummy's dug up after 3,000 years, it looks just fine. That's because the whole body was rubbed all over with King Tut Tut paste. This is the same tut paste that is used by the president of the King Tut Tut Paste Company. It has a wonderful flavor, too. Tastes like dates. King Tut is the first paste on the market that doesn't fight cavities. We've had enough of violence. King Tut negotiates. So remember, for that 3,000-year smile, use what the pharaohs used. Wonderful date-flavored King Tut Tut paste at all drugstores and tombs. The Ready for Prime Time players bring you Fantasy Pond. <laughs> Fantasy Pond, as you know, is that wonderful resort to which people go in order to get whatever it is they left home for. The resort is run by two charming men, Mickey Monty, a handsome, suave bachelor from Bolivia. <laughs> the other, a sex-crazed dwarf with a cockamamie accent. <laughs> we take you now to Fantasy Pond. Another boatload of fantasy-laden folks is approaching. Yes, perhaps there will be a big curvy blonde lady <laughs> on board that ship. As you know, I always dance with big curvy blonde ladies. I don't like to do it, but it gets laugh. <laughs> I see there is nothing down the gunfight. What a pity you're so short that you didn't see it. Here, let me help you to your feet. Oh, my. It must have hit you right on top of the head. You're two inches shorter. This called for legal action. Tut, tut. Here come two lovely guests. Good evening. I am Mickey Monty, part owner of Fantasy Pond. This is Murphy. He owns the smaller part of the world. How do you do? How do you do? Murphy, I must go. Will you do the honors? Certainly. Now, lady and gentlemen, let me show you how I'm the pond. Here on this resort, we have some noisy birds <laughs> and some noisy animals. <laughs> and some quiet flowers. <laughs> you see? Oh, it's nice oh, and uh, quiet, nice. Lovely, yes. yes. Now, may I introduce myself? I'm Cy, and I'm here to win a great deal of money. This is my friend, Miss Brzezinski. Bri, bri, 
Brzezinski? How do you spell that? The same way everybody else does. Of course. Oh, I see that you are a big, blonde, curvy lady. Yes, I guess I am from your point of view. <laughs> oh, was I pointing? I'm sorry. And don't ask me to dance. Say, just how tall or short are you? Well, I was four feet before the gangplank hit me. <laughs> now I'm only three feet ten inches. Say, that's very interesting. I happen to be a lawyer, and I think I see a way to make a big pile of money. For both of us, of course. Of course. I'll sue for a million dollars. An inch. Yeah. Oh, boy. Of course, the first inch is mine. <laughs> now, to start, you give me $10,000. $10,000? What for? That's my retainer. Retainer? What does that mean? It means that no matter what happens, I retain the $10,000. <laughs> you know something? It was better listening to the flowers. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, here we are at the casino. Do you like to gamble, Mr. Uh, Mr. Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Oh. Your middle name is And? Oh, you've heard of me. I think so. A new lady I know is Brzezinski. <laughs> well, it isn't. He was just kidding you. My family name is Marie. Oh, this is very nice, Marie. And what is your first name? Donnie And. <laughs> It would be interesting if you married this gentleman. Your name, I mean. Yes, it would be Donnie and Marie, Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> if I kept my maiden name, too, of course. But it would be better to be Donnie and Simon and Garfunkel simply by killing off Marie. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, my partner approaches. Tell you all. <laughs> Ah, there, uh, Mr. Uh, Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, how do you do, Miss Simon? No, he's Simon. I'm Donnie and... Donnie and Garfunkel, I see. No, we're not married. Then Donnie and is your Christian name. And Garfunkel is his Jewish name. <laughs> That's very interesting. I've known a few Finkels, but this is my first Funkel. <laughs> Well, Finkel, Funkel, I want to gamble. What's the limit here? Oh, that depends on your credit rating. But I think you'll find a credit manager to push over. Okay, who's the credit manager? I am. Have you any uh, credit cards? Oh, sure. Let's see. Uh, here's one, American Local. You mean American Express, of course. No, American Local. <laughs> it's good in a lot of stores in North Dakota. <laughs> And uh, here's one for China, the Orient Express card. And uh, here's one. Here's one for the National Bank of Palestine. Uh, this one's for Mother's Gas. Mother's Gas? My mother runs a gas station back home. Well, your credit is certainly good with us. Feel free to play at any dollar limit table. Thank you. Come on, Donnie. Let's go into the casino. Ah, just in time to make your bets on these roulette tables, sir and madame. Say, this game on us? Oh, yes, sir. This casino is run by the government. Fine. And the government is run by Joe Bandana, family of Chicago. <laughs> We don't fool around. Good. Well, we'll take $20 in chips and... Uh, here, Don, you play these ten. And I'll just put a dollar each on three, six, and nine. I'll put a dollar on red. And the wheel spin and come up. Twenty-one red. Oh, good. I win. Let it ride. I'll just play three, six, and nine again. They're my lucky numbers. And the winner is... Thirty red. Isn't that nice? 
I'll just let the four dollars ride. Now, that's silly. Take two dollars out. Play it intelligently. Here, I'll take three, six, and nine again. And the winning number is 14 red. Eight dollars. How lovely. I'll play those. Oh, you're being an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. Here's the winner. Twelve red. No, I have 16. Wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'll just put these eight dollars on black. Red has had it. I'll just let these ride. And the number is 32, Red. Can you believe it? I have $32. What do you got? Oh, you bet black, didn't you? Who asked you? <laughs> Did anybody ask you? I didn't hear anybody ask you. I think I'll just bet my $32 on number two. Give me 20. Here, I'm betting red. And the winner is number two, black. <laughs> $1,120. Isn't that sweet? What do you mean, sweet? It's just dumb, stupid luck. That's all. By the way, we're partners, you know. I gave you that $10. Oh, yes, you're right, dear. I could never have done it without you. What's fair is fair. Here's your $10 back. <laughs> I'll kill. I'll kill. No, no, folks. We don't want a scene yet, or do we? I'll give you a scene, you golf ball-headed little weasel. <laughs> Come out from behind there and fight like half a man. Here, I'll get on my knees. We'll fight even. Go ahead. Put up your tiny fists. Look, I'll put one hand behind my back and fight you with two fingers. I thought you wanted to be my lawyer. Later, I'll be your lawyer. First, I'm going to kill you. Now, now, is there some uh, little problem here? Yeah, there's a little problem, and I'm going to eliminate it. Say goodbye to short stuff. No, no, I'm sure this can all be adjusted. Tell me, how much did Mr. Funko lose? 20,000? 25? 10. 10,000? Well... 10 dollars. 10 dollars. 10 dollars. Uh, Mr. Funko. Would you mind stepping outside for just a moment? Just follow me. Now, Mr. Funko, you have lost ten dollars. Allow me to make an adjustment. What are you doing with that gun? I hope you don't mind. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Gee, boss, you killed him. Was it for the $10? No, my friend. After all, this is fantasy part. I like acting out my own fantasies, too, you know. I did it for pleasure. <laughs> this is Henry Morgan back in the theater. I'm sure you know that now, after many years, lawyers have agreed that it pays to advertise. Friends, are you about to sue somebody? Now is the perfect time to bring a lawsuit. You know perfectly well that somebody is bothering you. <laughs> Maybe it's your neighbor, or the gas company, or your wife. The thing to do is sue. Friends, thousands of sufferers just like you have sued and won. It's a lot easier than you think. And Greenspan, Fartle, Boysenberry, and McNiff are here to help you. No matter what the problem, Greenspan, Fartle, Boysenberry, and McNiff sue like lightning. And you don't have to come to us. Merely pick up your phone and call the toll-free number, and in no time at all, one of our well-dressed lawyers wearing a necktie will call at your home. <laughs> or send for our free booklet, which describes thousands of things you can sue for that you never even thought of. <laughs> now, friends, just to show you how we work, and to attract some new clients. All this week, we are featuring an all-purpose divorce for $4. Okay. But you must hurry. You always sue the one you love, and the one you love sues you. As long as skies are blue above, you can always sue. Green fan, final. Was a very too, and McNiff, of course. We are the place to 
to handle your case, especially divorce. Presenting our distinguished feature, Persons Magazine. Here you'll meet, right before your very ears, the outstanding persons about whom all the world is excited. Persons you would die to have in your very own home. Persons who have made their marks in the world. Persons whom you envy so much you could scream. In fact, we're so overcome that they have consented to appear in this program. We're all sick and nervous. I'm about to introduce the first famous, glamorous person. My hands are shaking. Ladies and gentlemen, our first person this week, that gorgeous model who appears in the advertising for the famous French perfume, Channel 44, Darlene Esterhazy. <laughs> Darlene, this is really a thrill. Tell me, how did you become an internationally famous beauty? Well, Mr. Nardle, first I want to say that Channel 44, the world's most exotical odor, also makes a few other items which I'm sure you'll agree. Why, of course, we Channel 44 is also the maker of the world-famous Channel 44 body dust powder for the body you love to touch, even when you're doing it yourself. <laughs> Also, the famous Channel 44 grease inhibitor, the Channel 44 moisturizer, which keeps in the precious moisture and screens out the harmful dry, the Channel 44 bath time unblush, well, now I'm quite the Channel sure. 44 gentle blush cheek enhancifier, the pre-dawn emollient for those who are obliged to rise in the wee hours. Or for those who aren't home yet, the Channel 44 wrinkle remover for those who would be smooth of brow and of elbow. Channel 44. Now, Miss Esther Hazy, we the were. Famous think... sunset appetite for those who anticipate a gay evening on the town and also, lest we forget, the Channel 44 baby bottom cotton swabs for skin one would caress with one's lips. <laughs> Is that it? Well, that's what they wrote down. <laughs> now we can proceed with the interview. Oh, I forgot to look at the other side of the paper. It says, at your favorite beauty counter, drugstore, specialty shop, Thank you very much, supermarket, darling. Supermarket, notion, supply. Esther Hazy. <laughs> And now, Persons Magazine takes great pleasure in presenting that remarkable disco drummer and lead singer of the number one group in the country today, the Iron Jackass. <laughs> Here is Sid Abominable. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Abominable, it's nice to have you with us. Uh, by the way, is Abominable your real name? Nah. Well, may I ask what your real name is? Suit yourself. All right, what is it? What's it for you? Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I, I thought... Disgusting. Well, I'm, I am sorry, I didn't... That's my real name. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh. I'm part Italian on my father's side. I see, that's a kind of a transfer. Scotch-Irish on my mother's side. Oh, you, you... I got some Croatian blood in me, too. <laughs> little of this, little of that. And you put this and that together, and you got... My your... father's part French. Uh-huh. So the reason I wasn't here last week is I was picked up by the fuzz in a motel in Buskirk for nothing. Nothing. I was framed. The fuzz said I had $40,000 worth of junk. What a lie. Lies. You mean you didn't have $40,000 worth of uh, junk on you? I had 80000 Them crummy cops stole half of it. <laughs> well, now, that's a pretty serious accusation. We could be in trouble. Would you like to reconsider? I needed that 80000 It was going to put my little kid through college. Well, it doesn't cost $80,000 to put a kid I'm through I'm talking college. about five years from now. <laughs> I see. And what does little disgusting want to be when he grows up? <laughs> a drummer like you? Abominable. 
I beg you. I, beg I you. made the name famous. Why should a kid grow up disgusting when he can be abominable? <laughs> oh, I, I was thinking that maybe you'd want to use your wife's name. What was it, by the way? I mean, before you married her. Mary. Same as now. Mary. <laughs> no, I meant. Mary Filthy. <laughs> She's part Latvian. Well, I want to thank you, Sid Abominable, for being with us today. It was a pleasure indeed. She's part Bolivian also. <laughs> now, Persons Magazine is proud to present one of the most glamorous women of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jackie Oy. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, Jackie Oy. We're all just <laughs> dying to hear about your latest goings-on. Where were you last night, for instance? Last night? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, the evening started with a little dinner given by the Maharaja of Bombay. Bombay? I didn't know they had a Maharaja. Not now, then. <laughs> oh. When, when was then? Before. All the poor thing has left is a little old bunch of rubies and emeralds and a tin mine. A tin mine. Or tin mines. You know, more than nine. <laughs> he has an Irish accent? Yes. Dinner was very nice. <laughs> we had stuffed Brussels sprouts. Good Lord, how do you stuff a Brussels sprout? <laughs> he has two chefs. One holds the Brussels sprout. While the other does the stuffing. I see. And what did you do after dinner? We took pornographs of everybody. Pornographs? With an instant pornographic camera. In color. And sound, of course. We, we can skip the details. Why? I have a pornographic memory. Look, um, I, I don't mean to be rude, but I think you mean photographic. Is that dirty? Well, no. <laughs> then I have a pornographic. <laughs> Who was your date for the evening? My next to the last husband. Uh, what about your present husband? Same fella. <laughs> well, wait a minute now. You mean the man you're married to now is on the way out? Wow. Hey, that's a scoop. Who's the next one, Jackie? You mean the last one? Yes. Well, I'm not sure. The Maharaja has asked me... But I'm not sure. Why is that? Well, I might want him for the next one, but I'm not sure that I'd want him for the last one. Well, he does have that Irish brogue. See, that's what I'm not sure about. Either he's Irish on his mother's side, or... Or what? Or he's working for the CIA. <laughs> I'll let you know. Thank you, and good night, Jackie Oy. <laughs> Weather forecast. The barometer will be falling. <laughs> See? And Morgan will be on the same corner in front of the cigar store very soon at this same time. Brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Here's Morgan again was written by and starred Henry Morgan, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Andy Griffith. Members of the company were Elvia Allman, Bill Baldwin, Dawes Butler, Mary Jane Croft, Virginia Gregg, Elliot Lewis, Shepard Menken, and Frank Nelson. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollison. Joanne Thompson is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. 
The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.